Good afternoon and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 21st of September 2020 and the time has just gone 12.29 BST, British summer time. And it's been a fairly negative start to the European trading session. There's quite a few uh, negative stories going on here. Um, essentially, it says carrying on from last week, continued concerns about rising cases of coronavirus, uh, particularly in Europe, um, localized lockdowns, chatter and speculation of a London lockdown, uh, although um, the talk that is doing the rounds um, seems to think that if you do have a lockdown in London, it won't be as severe as the lockdown that was imposed. The restrictions won't be as severe as those imposed uh, in March, but nonetheless, uh, that's hitting, hitting stocks across the board. Um, also, there's a, there's a story in relation to uh, a number of big name banks, uh, European banks, HSBC, Standard Chartered, listed in London, of course, uh, and uh, we've also and also Deutsche Bank in the mix as well, uh, in relation to appearing on a list um, um, of the of uh, U.S. Treasury Department's um, banks. Which have had, which have lodged and rec and uh, registered suspicious transactions. Uh, it just really kind of adds uh, additional uh, bearish sentiment to the markets. Uh, the likes of HSBC are, is a fairly big component of the FTSE 100, um, and it seemed to be a stock which has kind of managed over the years to, to largely um, stay out of the negative news of, of the banking sector of the last decade or, or, or 15 years. Um, so this has been really kind of this has really hit that stock pretty hard. Um, so, but the kind of wider kind of, the wider view uh, is that the chatter of a London lockdown has, has hit the, the FTSE 100 quite hard. Um, but also, it's kind of it's the it's ripple out effect uh, around Europe has been quite big as well. So we're seeing a broad sell off across the board. Um, some sectors will be hit more than others should there be another lockdown imposed in London. So the hospitality sector has been quite hit, as has the travel sector. Uh, we're, we're also seeing a broad sell off in oil, uh, oil, oil and gas companies, mining companies, banks. I mentioned about the uh, HSBC um, standard charter story uh, and also house builders. So everything across the board is taking a pretty bad knock. Uh, so what I'm going to quickly move on to now is the weekend article. And for those of you who tune into my videos on a weekly basis, you know that I run through the week ahead, which can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, under uh, latest news and analysis. So uh, today we had full year figures out from Superdry. Uh, tomorrow we will have first half numbers out from Kingfisher. Tomorrow we'll have first quarter numbers out from Nike. Um, on Wednesday we'll have the, fl we have the flash manufacturing uh, we have a manufacturing uh, service PMI numbers from Germany, France, and the UK. Uh, what we're also going to have as well is uh, on Thursday, we're going to have full year numbers from Smith's Groups uh, and first half numbers from Cineworld. On Thursday, we also have the German IFO numbers coming out. Uh, we'll have an EU summit uh, on Thursday. As we do every single Thursday, we have US jobless claims. That'll give us a taste of what's going on with the US labor market, uh, particularly in light of some of the economic indicators in the US would suggest that they kind of, the, uh, the economy, the, the recovery may be tapering off a bit. Uh, and finally on Thursday, uh, Darden restaurants have Q1 results out. So as always, I'll run through some of the big indices, go on to some currency pairs and then on to commodities. So starting off with the FTSE 100, and the FTSE 100 out of the kind of big European and US indices has been the weakest of the bunch. Uh, the recovery that it had from the March into uh, into June didn't get anywhere near the highs that were achieved uh, pre-pandemic. And we can see here, we've been in a kind of nice series of lower lows and lower highs since June. So classic example of a downward trend, lower lows and lower highs. We've had quite aggressive sell-off in today's session here. Uh, so if we do move any lower, we could be looking at retesting the lows of the month, heading down towards 57.67, and a break below that could take us down towards this zone here, uh, down around 5,660. Uh, any moves to the upside on the uh, on the FTSE 100 are likely to r run into resistance in this zone here, 6,000, big psychological number. Um, and we're currently trading, you know, nearly 200 points away from that. And if we do head north of 6,000, keep an eye out for this zone here, where, whereby 
of the blue line, the 50 day moving average, and the yellow line, the 100 day moving average, both those metrics kind of effectively kind of coincide with each other. We saw a fair bit of resistance uh, there. Um, you know, we had, the, we had the lower low in early September, the lower high in mid September, and the move turned lower again. So we really would need to take out this area here, uh, the highs are kind of mid September, before we could kind of begin to think and try to kind of shake off the wider bearish trend of the last few months. I'll take a look at what's going on over in Germany on the DAX. The German market was in better shape. Notice how there was a much better recovery and rally from late March uh, into, all, into, into early September. In fact, the, the, the highs that were achieved in September were the highest levels seen since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, so multi-month highs were achieved in September. So it shows the DAX is in pretty good shape. But we can see here at the last few sessions, the market really struggled to, to gain ground last week to try to move higher. And we found an aggressive move lower today. We were well below this blue line here, the 50 day moving average. Notice how that metric acted nicely as support on a few occasions. Not, not recently enough, granted, it did trade a bit below it, uh, but on those occasions, it always managed to close above it, uh, but now we're firmly below it. Uh, so the sentiment has, 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 uh, has, has turned sharply lower, turned sharply sour. If you do continue to push lower from here, we could be like heading back down towards the lows of early August, uh, down around 12,515. And if we go below that, we can then head potentially down toward this red line here, the 200 moving average, and that comes to play at 12,189. Notice how that red line acted nicely as support back in late July. So it could be of importance again. Uh, if it did move on up higher from here, we could be looking heading back up towards 13,000. We're currently around 12,680. And if you go beyond that, we really need to be kind of taking it off these, the highs achieved here in the kind of big, kind of middle of September. You know, I'm going to say 13,339, 13,300. And then if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at retesting the highs of early September, which of course were multi-month highs. Take a look now, what's going on with the Dow Jones. Similar to the DAX, it's had a great recovery between late March and into uh, into early September. Multi-month highs were achieved in September, so the market's fairly decent shape. But since then, we've had the lower low, a lower high, and another lower low. So sentiment's turning over on itself. Uh, we can see here at, at the uh, w w when cash trading gets underway, we're expecting the Dow Jones to open up around 27,183. So, so the lows of today's future session uh, would suggest we're going to be heading back down towards levels last seen in early August. If we do press on lower from here, we could be likely heading down towards 27,000, you know, big psychological number. Uh, and if we go below that, we can then head that down toward this red line here, the 20 moving average, uh, which comes into play at 26,287. And if we go below that, we could be heading down towards this area here, 26,000. Uh, any moves to the upside could occur resistance or, uh, from this blue line, the 50 day moving average. We can see that act nicely on a few occasions as support in the last few months. So it could act at resistance in the future. Uh, and the 50 day moving average on the Dow comes into play at 27,550. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading towards 28,000. Taking a look at what's going on with the S&P 500. S&P 500 at the beginning of the month was at all time highs. So I'll give you an idea how strong the rally has been in the S&P 500 in comparison with the Dow Jones, which is only at multi-month highs. Um, but since then, uh, like the Dow Jones, we've had the lower low, we've had the lower high, and then we have another lower low. Um, we get so it's just clear that we're kind of pressing lower on, on the S&P 500. If you take a look at the MACD histogram, the MACD indicator, we can see that as the market's been moving lower, there's been a steady increase in negative momentum. So the kind of momentum is with the bears. So if we do press on lower from here, we could like head back down toward this line here in around 3,200. Not only is it kind of, you know, 3,200, you know, a big, a big round number. Um, but on top of that, we can see that on a few occasions it acted nicely as support. So if it's acted as support in the past, it makes it more likely that it'll act as support in the future, although there are no guarantees. Any move to the upside uh, could occur resistance at 3,300. And if we go beyond that, this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, which has previously acted as support on a number of occasions in the last few weeks, uh, at 3,351, 3, that could act as resistance on the way up. Um, one of the tenets of Dow theory, 
uh, which you often talk about in my videos, states that the averages must confirm each other, which essentially means if you're looking at a certain market and it's moving in a certain direction, and if you see markets that are similar to it are also moving in the same direction, you can become more confident that that, that move uh, across the board is going to continue. So we've seen the dot. So the S&P 500 below its 50-day moving average. We've seen the Dow, we've seen the Dow Jones below its 50-day moving average, uh, and we've also seen the, um, the 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 DAX over in Germany below its 50-day moving average. And as you can see, as you saw, uh, the FTSE 100 is well below its 50-day moving average. So you got some big indices there that are all below their 50-day moving averages. Should they all continue to remain below their 50-day moving average? Averages that would increase the likelihood of, of those markets uh, remaining in, in their in their more, more recent bearish move. Um, one of the beneficiaries of the negative move in uh, stocks and kind of commodities has been the U.S. dollar. So, uh, in the last few sessions, we've seen a bit. Of, we see some um, buying of the U.S. dollar whenever we've had negative days uh, on stocks and commodities, which are deemed to be kind of risk on currents, risk on assets. Um, the wider trend for euro dollar is very much at the upside, um, but we more recently we've seen a bit of a sell off. So we did hit um, its highest level in over two years at the beginning of the month, but since then it's been rather range bound. We're drifting a bit lower. The euro is under pressure today on account of the dollar gaining ground because it's at the moment perceived to be a lower risk asset, um, a risk off asset. If we press on lower here, we could look at retesting this blue line here at the 50 day moving average. And uh, that comes to play just south of here. Not, not, we're, we're pretty close to it at one spot 17.65. If we go below that, we could then be like heading towards back down towards this zone here in at one spot 16.96. And a move below that could take us down towards one spot 16. Any move to the upside in in um in your dollar are likely to recur at resistance um at the, at the highs of about a week and a half ago in at one spot 19.17. Uh, and if we go beyond that, we could be like heading up towards the uh, the 120 area. Taking like a pound dollar, so obviously the, the British pound has been under pressure recently, given what's going on. The uncertainty about the future trading relationship between the UK and the European Union when the transition period ends uh, at, the, at the very end of, of December, uh, there's a possibility that the UK and the UK, the UK and the EU could do its trading uh, on WTO terms. Come um, early 2021 and that fear is putting pressure in the British pound. So at the start of the month we saw pound dollar hit its highest level since December, so over kind of about a nine month high. But since then I renewed fears in relation to the UK, the UK's relationship with the European Union has the pressure on the British pound. In addition to that, risk off sentiment in, in stock markets has the pressure on, on the has put upward pressure on the dollar and in turn downward pressure on the pound. Um, so we've had a sharp move to the downside we said the lower low, we've had a lower high. It's failed to get retake the 50 day moving average. It's turning over on itself again. If you retake the recent lows here, we could be heading back down toward this red line here, the 200 day moving average in at one spot, 27, 29. And if you go below that, we could then be heading back down towards the lows of mid August, sorry, mid July rather, in at one spot, 2480. And if you head below that, we could then be looking heading, heading down, potentially down as far as this, this area here at one spot, 2251. Coming on to gold next. So gold traditionally does well when traders are in risk off mode, but the US dollar has been performing well in, when, um, in, in relation to risk off sentiment and the dollar and gold is traded in US dollars. So the firmer US dollar has actually been hurting gold. Um, so the, the wider move in gold has been very bullish. We had an all time high uh, only at the beginning of August. And since then, we've been trading in a narrowish range. The, you know, the broader upward trend is still intact. If we draw a trend line between the lows of mid-August to the lows of early September, we get this trend line here. We're not too far, you know, we're essentially being supported by the trend line at the moment. While we continue to hold above the trend line, the wider upward trend should continue. And if we press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the highs of last week in at one spot 19, sorry, 1973. If you go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards 2000. If you do have a break below this trend line here, uh, we could be looking heading back down towards 1900. Even the lows of the last few weeks have gotten close to 1900, but haven't gotten quite there. And if you do have a size of break below 1900, it could take us back down towards the lows of early mid-August in at 1863. And finally, 
coming on to oil. Brent crude November contract. Um, you know, oil would also I suppose it fall into the category of being a, a risk on asset. So if the, if, the, if these if there are perceptions that the the global economy is struggling because of the COVID nineteen crisis, it's likely we could see gay we could see um, d- demand or perceptions of demand for oil taper off. So we have seen some seen some weakness in the oil market recently. We have we did achieve you know multi month highs, five month highs in the month of August, but notice how obviously kind of kind of coinciding with uncertainty in stock markets. We've also seen a pullback in the a move lower in, in the oil market. The wider upward trend of the last few months is, is, is still intact. But I'm a bit concerned that we've had the lower low. This could turn out to be a lower high and the market might turn over on itself yet again. And if that is the case, keep an eye out for this area here in around 39 spot 40 there thereabouts. On a few occasions, that area acted resistance. Uh, so it could act as resistance in it again. But if you do have a decent break below that, that would, that would be significant. Um, that could take us back down towards the lows. Of, uh, of mid to early to mid June in around 30, 37 spot 93. And if we go below that, it could take us back down towards the 36 area. But keep in mind, the wider trend is at the upside. So if we press on higher from here, and if we retake this blue line, the 50 moving average, which acted as well, both support and resistance recently, if we retake that at 44 spot 03, we could be looking up heading towards 45, and then we could be looking at retesting the highs that were achieved um in the early part of august uh that's all from this from this video this week having a good trading week and good luck